Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first monetary policy statement since the demise of our departed gallant governor, the late Professor Emmanuel Tumusime Mutebile. Professor Tumusime Mutebile tamed inflation in Uganda by establishing fiscal discipline in the 1990s and has been a pillar of macroeconomic stability throughout his central banking career. He is dearly missed by a grateful Bank of Uganda and we shall maintain his legacy by striving to maintain price stability and a sound financial system based on which we will support the growth and socioeconomic transformation of Uganda. Let me now turn to the monetary policy statement for February 2022. The Bank of Uganda at the Monetary Policy Committee meeting of February 2022 maintained the central bank rate at 6.5%. The economy is estimated to have bounced back in 2021, growing in the range of 6.5 to 7% although it came after a 1.5 contraction in 2020 as the pandemic forced parts of the economy to shut. Indeed, the high frequency indicators of economic activity for October 2021 to January 2022 suggest that the economy was on a strong rebound. Domestic demand is making a strong comeback as COVID-19 related restrictions are eased, adding to the gains from the robust external demand. Considering this recovery and the signs that the effect of the Omicron outbreak on economic activity has been relatively small, the outlook for economic growth is more positive than earlier projected. In 2022, there could be a loss of growth momentum as global factors turn adverse, but real GDP is projected to grow by around 6% as the demand for the recovery broadens. However, lower global growth, continuous supply chain disruptions, tighter global monetary and financing conditions could constrain external demand. In addition, the recovery might remain fragile and uneven across sectors. Over the medium term, government investments in infrastructure is expected to enhance productive capacity and coupled with increased social spending and recovery in tourism, this should bring annual growth rate above seven percent. Risk to growth outlook remain tilted to the downside. On the domestic front, uncertainty about the evolution of the pandemic continues to cast a shadow on economic recovery. New COVID-19 variants and a resurgence of lockdown measures would weigh on the outlook. Another important source of uncertainty for the outlook is the public investment and how this will be financed under the fiscal consolidation path, which is necessary to keep debt sustainable and avoid the risk of debt distress. The slow execution of public investment projects and further delays in oil investments could dampen the growth outlook. Moreover, the increasing frequency and intensity of climate shocks could undermine agricultural activity. Additionally, risks remain from the global economic slowdown, the prolonged supply chain bottlenecks, and the geopolitical tensions. Furthermore, global inflationary pressures, which calls for a faster withdrawal of monetary accommodation could result in a change in investor sentiment and the associated tighter domestic financial condition 
and this could stall the domestic economic recovery. On the upside, accelerated vaccine rollout, uh, waning of the pandemic, and improved efficiency in the execution of public investments would help boost economic activity. Inflationary pressures remain modest. The January 2022 inflation outcomes indicate that the annual headline inflation declined to 2.7%, while core inflation declined to 2.3% from the 2.9% reported for both in December 2021. Despite the continued rise in food crop energy, fuel, and utilities prices. The downturn has largely been driven by a decline in transport costs because of the lifting of travel restrictions. The outlook for inflation remains largely unchanged from that of the December 2021 MPC meeting. While the demand side inflationary pressures remain subdued, upside inflationary risks remain and inflation could accelerate in the months ahead owing to rises in energy and food prices. Moreover, household spending, particularly on services, is forecast to be higher due to the full opening of the economy. The rise in inflation will also reflect strong producer inflation domestically and import prices. In the medium term, that is two to three years ahead, as demand fully uh, recovers, inflation is forecast to rise, but should stabilize around 5% target, contingent on the evolution of the pandemic. There could be inflation surprises, however, because of the stronger rise in food crop, commodity, and import prices and the exchange rate depreciation. There are considerable uncertainties surrounding this outlook. The most significant risk is the duration of disruptions to the global production chain and related stronger inflation pressures. If the upswing in global cost push inflation pressures turn out to be larger or more persistent than currently expected. It could spill over into the domestic economy, especially so if combined with a weaker shilling. If the exchange rate were to depreciate significantly, partly on account of higher demand for foreign currency and monetary policy tightening in advanced countries, this would increase the overall inflation pressures and foster a need for tightening monetary policy going forward. In addition, containment of the COVID-19 outbreaks and benign health-related developments could provide a strong boost to confidence and result in greater domestic demand, resulting in the economy recovering much stronger than currently being projected. On the downside, however, a faster resolution of global supply chain disruptions, lower international commodity prices, and good food crop harvest could cause inflation to remain subdued. Additionally, inflation pressures could weaken in the event of a more protracted and uh, damaging COVID-19 outbreak. The MPC meeting today assessed that economic recovery continues to require monetary policy support. Based on an assessment of the current macroeconomic situation and the outlook and the balance of risks, the MPC judged that keeping CBR unchanged at 6.5% would be consistent with meeting the inflation target of 5% sustainably in the medium term while supporting economic growth recovery. The ban on the CBR is also maintained at plus 
at minus two percentage points and the margins on the rediscount rate and the bank rate have been kept unchanged at three and four percentage points on the CBR respectively. Consequently, the rediscount rate and the bank rate have been maintained at 9.5% and 10.5% respectively. Going forward, the monetary policy stand will be adjusted depending on how fast the economy recovers relative to its long-run growth path and how quickly inflation evolves towards its medium-term target. The Bank of Uganda will continue with targeted credit relief measures for the education and hospitality sectors, which remained under lockdown for an extended uh, time. Furthermore, Bank of Uganda will maintain the COVID-19 liquidity assistance program to manage potential liquidity risks arising from the pandemic until economic situation normalizes. I thank you all for your very kind attention.